Okay, everybody, glad to have you back. Let's continue with our discussion. So far, we've covered the immense cost of college, the reality that there are ways to manage that cost, and that one of those strategies involves sending letters to appeal the financial aid offers from schools when they aren't adequate. So why do these appeal letters work? Well, it's really quite simple. Once you are able to recognize that colleges and universities are businesses, it all comes together. Students are the customers of a school. Education is the product. In order to stay in business, the school has to sell education to the student. Empty chairs are a university's worst enemy. If they need to offer a few discounts to ensure a full enrollment, so be it. But one area where schools begin to differ from businesses is that some of a university's customers will continue to give money even after they're done paying for the education. I'm sure all of you have been solicited by your alma mater for donations after you've graduated, right? Of course you have. And who do you think donates the most money to their alma mater? The best, brightest, and most successful graduates, of course. So sometimes a discount isn't even a discount, it's an investment an investment into future donations. Did you know that Harvard University has a $34 billion endowment? The University of Wyoming, a fairly nondescript school, has $422 million in its endowment. Where do you think that money comes from? Tuition, fees, and donations. Like any good business, schools are very thoughtful about how they use their money. What College Money Academy teaches you is how to tap into that money in order to make college affordable. Some schools use their endowment aggressively and offer a lot of help to the students they want. Therefore, what you need to learn is how to identify those schools that are aggressive and where your child will be highly sought after. Earlier I mentioned that we'd come back to the information about a specific university. Let's look at it again to get an understanding of this. Schools report a variety of information from their most recent enrollment cycle. This information gives us the ability to determine what an average student looks like for any particular school. What you see here is from a service we subscribe to and in my College Money Academy online program, I show you how to access this information as a consumer which you need in order to appeal effectively. On this page, you'll see that the average incoming freshman at this school scored a 28 on the ACT and a 1771 on the SAT. Parents make the mistake of using these numbers only as a barometer on whether or not their kid will be admitted. Hey son, you got a 30 on the ACT, congratulations. You're going to get in. But to look at it from this perspective is a mistake. What you need to do is look at this from a standpoint of leverage. You see, if your son scored a 30 on the ACT, is he average? No, he's not. Should he then receive an average financial aid offer? No, he shouldn't. We already know that the average offer for those without financial need from this school was $16,218. And the average for those students with financial need was about $29,000. So if you're an above average student for this university and you receive a below average offer, then what do you do? That's right, you appeal. Let me give you one more example. This one just happened. I was meeting with a couple whose son scored a 33 on the ACT, that is incredible. He's been admitted to the University of Colorado, which you'll see here. And the school offered him a $5,000 grant, free money. This family does not qualify for need-based aid. They make really good money and have solid assets. I asked the dad, are you, are you going to accept this or are you going to appeal it? He said, I don't know, is it a good offer? Well, let's look. The average gift aid award was about $9,700 and the average student scored a 27 on the ACT. There's a huge difference between a 27 and a 33 on the ACT. So did CU lowball them, yes or no? They most definitely did lowball this family. So this dad now feels empowered. He now has some leverage, some room to negotiate. I'm extremely confident they will receive money and I can't wait to hear how it works out. Okay, everyone, we're getting close to the end. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll be right back.